all of you about the work. So before I start my presentation, let me a little bit introduce myself. Uh, my name is Muhammad Nur Ali Akbar. You can call me Akbar or Muhammad. Talk to you. Uh, today, I would like to give uh, some overview fundamentally about the geological CO2 storage. Uh, currently, a lot of uh, expertise, a lot of people talking about the carbon storage and also regarding the carbon captures. Uh, but here, what I'm going to present, it is more uh, precisely related with the geological CO2 storage because we can store CO2 in everywhere, in many places, in the surface, in the subsurface and so on. But today it will be most related how we are from the subsurface expert can be a good best practice that we already work a lot in oil and gas. It can be implemented uh, as part of the of the subsurface expert to store our CO2 in, in the subsurface. So uh, let's go to the next slide. So a little bit about myself, uh, my background, I'm petroleum engineering and bachelor and my master in petroleum geoscience. Uh, I just started my career here in Norway uh, last year. Uh, previously, I was working in uh, Hungary, more or less around uh, three and a half years. And then uh, I also was working, started my career in 2014, uh, more or less now 10 years experience working with the consulting, with some consultancy activities in, uh, in Indonesia, and then moved to Norway uh, last year. Uh, I also published more than 30 papers already. Some of the paper was awarded some best papers and also in SP, SPWLA and some uh, local chapters. And also uh, my uh, expertise mostly with the uh, reservoir simulation study, uh, petrophysics, and also related with the CCS uh, working now uh, while, while working in Norway. So uh, currently I give a couple of surf uh, surfaces uh, regarding the advisory for field development plan, flow assurance, call simulations, and even the economic projects with my team. And also we also build some software under the web-based software in the, uh, in the integrated platform. And also currently I am working a lot with uh, research and development through the joint industry projects uh, regarding central development, which is relative permeability uh, uh, core flow simulations uh, together with the uh, uncertainty of relative permeability. So what is the presentation uh, today? It will be start with the introduction of GCS or geological carbon storage. I will start with the motivation and why do we need the GCS itself? And then I will continue to the, the GCS side or uh, how we classify regarding the storage classifications and also how we do the screening process to make the places or to make the site it is ready to use for geological carbon storage purposes. And then uh, one of the most important about the utilization of CO2 itself regarding the EOR, EGR, enhanced weather recovery, enhanced gas recovery for geothermal, for cushion gas, for gas storage, or even for hydrogen storage. And also some project design, how we can design our projects in order to have a good CO2 storage capacity evaluations, understanding the trapping mechanisms, and also it will be related for the carbon monitoring in the subsurface. And we'll be close with the take home messages. The presentation more or less in 45 minutes. Uh, we will have a five minute question and answers. And then it will be added more or less maximum 50 minutes as requested from skill up. So let's go to the motivations. We already know that um, during the petroleum ages, the accelerations of the global emission of the CO2 is increasing, skyrocketing uh, ex uh, exponentially, especially in the last decade. Uh, many activities regarding the petroleum, especially now the oil price is increasing, meaning that uh, more producers coming and the more emission also is coming. Actually, the global heating, it is by nature, it will be happen. But due to the activities of the industrial ages, petroleum ages, it is accelerating a lot. And many calls, uh, like let's say like a Paris Agreement in 2015, it's already have a lot of calls regarding reduce the CO2 emissions. 
And also, uh, there is some target by 2050, at least the emission can be reduced, uh, especially in uh, European continents, it's up to zero, net zero carbon. But is it possible to be achieved if we don't do anything? So that's why one of the good example putting the CO2 into the underground storage, it is most reliable that we can do the, the, the storage in the quite big amount of the carbons and store it permanently uh, to, be, to, to be stored uh, in the underground. And there are things that uh, we need to use uh, another energy, which is more efficient, more cleaner, renewable resources, but to, to reach this uh, this stage, it take a lot of time. It take a lot of cost as well. I believe that uh, uh, many activities currently regarding the CCS and also renewable energy is more developed in the Western country, like in European or American. But uh, many countries, is, uh, developing countries, is still struggling. Even though we they they still has a minimum energy needs. They still uh, need more energy. Many countries, many cities, they don't, or many uh, towns, they still don't have an electric city. So that's why it can be a, a big debate in many kind of uh, meetings or uh, conferences regarding the CCS. I was part of the debate as well of this question. But we are not talking about the debate here. Well, we are not going to talk about the, how we can store the carbon uh, hydro or uh, CO2 into the subsurface uh, safely. So why do we need GCS? I already talked before. So currently global fossil emissions is up to 80% coming, uh, coming from fossil fuel. And then uh, we try at least the burning uh, result from the fossil fuel that we can solve, store back into the, into the subsurface. So during this storage as well, the transition is needed. Uh, kind of uh, improve energy efficiency through the many kind of renewable energies like uh, solar from uh, from hydrogens through electrolysis and so on from the wind from uh, from uh, geothermal and so on but deploying co2 capture storage it is one of the most important at this moment and then we can start immediately and the other than that, uh, another option, expanded of use uh, nuclear power is also a really good option, uh, but still uh, regarding the regulation is still uh, quite strict in many countries. So let's start with the CO2 storage classification in the underground or the subsurface. Actually, we can store the CO2 in many places. There are many possible of CO2 storage can be done, but, if you are talking about the CCS, it's not only about the storage. We are talking about the capture as well. After we capture the CO2, how we can transport it. And then after that, where we have to store. Since this is a big stuff that we cannot talk everything in one uh, session. So as uh, the title mentioned here, I will talk about, about the storage. It's a really good uh, image uh, coming from uh, CO2 CRC. Uh, this is the, the copyright here. So uh, there are many places that we can save the CO2, like in the saline aquifer, or even we can uh, put into the depleted reservoirs. It can be used also as a utilization for EOR, enhanced oil recovery, or even for the uh, enhanced gas recovery as well. And some of them, they use uh, CO2 uh, in the coal bed uh, methane, which is also possible as a part of uh, improving the EGR in coal bed methane or even store the CO2 itself. And the other thing like uh, other formations like a basement or, or basalt or metamorphic fractures, this is what we uh, have implemented in several case studies. Uh, but what is the most promising at this moment, I would say it is related with the depleted oil and gas uh, field. There is a challenge as well, but we already know uh, quite good regarding the depleted reservoir because we already have a produce fluid. We already ass do assessment during the field productions. For many years, we understood the performance. We know that uh, the injectivity behaviors, but the, the, the challenge is it could be the other things, which is the containment 
of the of the reservoir itself. But we will talk about it uh, more detail in the next couple of slides. So what we have to do, we need to do some screening parameters. But the most important when we do the geological storage, where we can store the CO2, this is the most important question. Once we got the location where we can store the CO2, and then we have to calculate it, how much the CO2 can be injected. After we already understood how much the CO2 can be stored, how much where it can be located, and then can we store it safely? This is another question. So we, we try to store the CO2 for forever, uh, meaning that we are not uh, uh, producing back the CO2, except if we have some utilization behind. It's mean that there will be a cyclic behind. But what is the most important at this moment, how we can store it safely? And then uh, the other thing that it's also related with the economics. Many CCS activity at this moment, it is uh, not really wo work properly because of the cost. Uh, it's not really good profitable. So that's why a lot of uh, support from the governments in different countries in order to support how the CCS can work at this moment. The other things that, the three things that we have to evaluate it during uh, the GCS or geological carbon storage, which is related with the capacity, which is how much we can uh, inject the CO2. And then regarding the injectivity, how much flow rate or sufficient rate that we can inject into the wells. And the other things about the containment, and then it's related with the geological storage unit itself. Where is the possible uh, uh, migrating units? Let's say some leakage pathway that we have to evaluate it. How to make sure that if we store CO2 in that uh, specific uh, specific uh, storage, it will be remain there. It's not go to forever. This is what we have to investigate it. So that's why uh, during the screening. The, this is one of the good uh, report from Geocapacity. Where is the possible CO2 storage can be stored even in the aquifer, in the depleted hydrocarbon, or in the coal field? And the bubble size here is related to how big the capacity it can be stored. It is a big potential, yes, regarding the source and things. But what we have to consider. What we have to consider here is some of the parameters regarding the evaluations of the storage capacity that I mentioned before, because it will be impacting the unit of capital expenditure and operation, operating costs as well. The other, thing, the other things, driving mechanisms, it is a strong water drive, it is a weak water drive, or it is just a depleted oil and gas without any specific water driving mechanisms the number of the wells, injection potential as well, because uh, the number of wells, it will be strongly related with the capital expenditure that we have to do it also uh, regarding the OPEX. And the other things we can see with the EOR uh, side effect or EGR side effects, how it can impact to the economy if it, uh, we use it as CCUS or as a utilization for enhanced hydrocarbon recovery, and also regarding the surface locations. Surface location, it can be related with the, with the safety as well. It is in the remote area or it is uh, close to the city. If it's in the remote area, meaning that you have a big infrastructure that you have to build, and then it will also relate it with the economics. But if you are stored close to the city's area, meaning that it will be related with the political risk and also with the societal risk. And the other things, if the well is already abundant, then uh, there are some high chest risks as well that we have to consider. I will explain to you in the next slide why it is important regarding the, the wells uh, specifications. Yes, this is the slide. This is the screening process that we have to go before we, we, um, uh, we consider to inject the CO2 into our reservoirs. First priority is about locations that I mentioned, where it will be located, in the remote area, in the offshore, in the onshore, or uh, uh, it will be somewhere else. The other things is about well integrity and platform types. 
This is also important. If you are in the offshore, what kind of platform it will be uh, main of the injector? Is it the main platform? Or it will be in the in the in the in the satellite platform. The other thing is about well integrity. Why? Because well integrity is it the main pathway that the possible of uh, possible of uh, of CO two can be uh, can be leakage and go further. I think somebody was drawing on my screen. Okay, thank you. So there is a possible path, uh, leakage pathway is coming from the well because this is the hole, which is uh, which is connected from surface until you in, until the subsurface or to the reservoir, and many kind of possible pathway it can be through the casing, let's say it can be between casing and another cement, it can be uh, between the cement plug and the casing. Or even uh, if the cement quality is not good enough, there are some pores behind. Some of the CO2 it can be deteriorate the quality of the cement and go through, make a pores and uh, make the CO2 leakage through the cement itself. Or maybe some fractures happen in annular cement, for example, or even between the cement and formations. So that's why the well integrity, it should be really important to be evaluated because so once you inject the CO2 into the wells, Make sure that the CO two is not going leakage through the uh, through the through the well integrity itself. So, if you already have a possibility uh, potential that uh, the well integrity is not good in your uh, depleted field, then you have to remove the field itself to be selected into the storage. But if you already pass this assessment, then then you can go to the priority two it's regarding the containment. How about the well seal integrity that we already discussed? And then the other thing is about geological seal integrity containment, which is coming from, uh, from the fractures. It can be the open fractures naturally, or it can be reactivation regarding the, the injection of the CO2. Geomechanical happen inside the reservoirs. And then these geomechanical activities can lead into the fractures. Leading the fractures, meaning that creating the pathway, the CO2 can go farther and farther, or even go up to until the surface area. The other things that the reuse existing well, let's say if you are in depleted field, there are many wells that already existed and you want to reuse it. Is it still okay to reuse it? Because most of the well is designed for producing oil or gas, but now you are injecting high uh, CO2 content or even the purely CO2, which is really corrosive, meaning that is the well it's uh, good enough to handle the, the, the corrosive uh, materials uh, flowing into that area. If it's not ready, then you have to do the work over, changing the well quality and so on. If this takes a lot of uh, cost, then it will, be, uh, it will be a problem. If you're already sure about the containment and so on, and then we go to calculate the capacity, if we are not sure about this, then we forget about capacity and injectivity. But if we are already sure about priority one, priority two regarding containment, and then we can go to the calculate the capacity. We can regarding the capacity, we are considering about the production location, support pressure, reservoir compartment, which is leading into the how much the CO two can be storage in the ultimate uh, storage, and at the end. Once we already know how much the storage can be done, and then we will talk about injectivity because it is, will be a negotiation as well regarding the market, how much the CO2 rate can be injected by daily. So in order to understand how much uh, uh, the rate that we can inject it, it into the reservoir, we need to understand how much the injectivity of the, our reservoir. It will be most strongly related with the injection capacity regarding the uh, transmissibility and also the heterogeneity of the rocks. And also it can be related with the strong aquifer uh, strength. If you have a stronger aquifer, meaning that you have more pressure you need to inject the CO2, but if you are much uh, depleted, then you have a, a lower, uh, lower pressure injected. But the other thing is that supercritical CO2 in the reservoir, it's behave really unique. And it's just really complicated, even though in the well bore, the surrounding well bore, or even far from the well bore. 
The other things also we have to consider how much the hydrocarbon is remain if we are injecting into the depleted uh, uh, hydrocarbon reservoirs. And the other things also you have to consider regarding the initial target CO2 and also hydrocarbon rate if it's still uh, some EOR activity is taken into account. So this is the, the simple way how we can uh, consider about the screening process of your depleted hydrocarbon reservoir. And the most important is we need to monitor. It is a monitorability is, is needed that we can monitor during the injection that the CO2 will still remain there. It's not go to everywhere or not uh, leakage to the other, uh, uh, to the other beds. So let's a little bit understood what is the CO2 characteristics during the GCS or geological carbon storage here. So in a simple way, this is a good uh, a good uh, analogy is how the CO2 by volume, it will be looks like in the surface and then how it will be look like when it is injected into the supercritical conditions. When we are injecting into the reservoirs, meaning that the reservoir pressure is a higher pressure, uh, depending on the depth and also increasing temperatures. Meaning that if you are more than uh, 50 degrees Celsius, or let's say in the critical point it is 30 degrees Celsius, and the pressure it is uh, more, than, uh, more than 70 bars, meaning that you are already in the supercritical conditions. What happened actually in the supercritical conditions? In the supercritical condition, you have a density, it's like a liquid. It's just, uh, more or less around uh, 500 to 700 uh, kilogram per meter cubic. And the problem is the viscosity is very, very low. It is really, uh, it's uh, behave like a gas, meaning that it's really hard to control in the, uh, in the subsurface point of view and difficult to understand. So when you injected your supercritical CO2 into the reservoirs, many kind of couple process happen, which is related with the mechanical, a thermal, chemical, hydrogeological, and also biological. And why this is important? Because these couple mechanisms can affect the calculations regarding the storage unit, how much the storage calculated can be happen. And the other things that not only about the storage, it will be also related with the injectivity quality of your reservoirs. If there are some thermal activities happen surrounding your nerve ball, meaning that some, uh, some uh, materials can be, is, can be blocking the area, like for example, the salt precipitations can be happen, uh, and then the salt precipitation can blocking the porous medium of your rocks, meaning that it can be blocking the flow. So that's why, the study of the flow assurance from the surface until the subsurface, until the near well bore, it's, it's really must to be understood in order to prevent any kind of uh, scaling activities on your, in your wells. The other thing is that the, the weather, um, uh, the, the weather, the temperature is really, really sensitive since you see that the temperature changing of the CO2 can be different. Let's say if you are injecting in the surface, you are in the winter conditions, the condition it can be vapor in the surface, but when you're injecting into the well bore, it could be in the in the in the, in the liquid phase. And also, uh, we can see a couple of study here, like in Snowfit, they're in the liquid phase, and the other one in Sladenor, they're also in the liquid phase. But what if if you if if you bring your your uh, your uh, your reservoir in supercritical, it it will be a different story. It is also an example if you if you uh, transport your CO two into the using a ship or also in the big ships you you see understand how where the CO two should be stored here. The other things that uh, the activities of this couple it can uh, really have a significant impact into the ultimate uh, storage resources. I will show you one of the example uh, of the simulation study that work uh, with this couple study in the next couple of slides. And then after we understood about this uh, uh, CO2 characteristic, and then we will see as well, what is the most important regarding the storage capacity that we have to consider. In the early phases, when you inject the CO2, 
most of the trapping mechanism is really important. So uh, during the early phase of the injection, you will see a lot of CO2 in the free phase. They are not soluble. Some of them are soluble in this part, let's say, but most of them is in the free condition of the CO2. They are uh, behave like a, they, they are still in the free phase, not uh, mixing with the other liquid. But the other, some of them are soluble, solubles. But during the time when you inject the CO2, you stop the injection of the CO2 and then, uh, and then uh, remain the CO2, the CO2 will be flowing and some uh, chemical activities, geomechanical uh, process will be happen inside the reservoirs. Meaning that the content of the residual CO2 will be increased and some solubility trapping also will be happen. And the other things, some of them, it will be mineralized being uh, a solid uh, carbon. And this trapping mechanism, it should be well understood, well estimated, and how it will be happening in the, in the reservoirs. Not only in the reservoir, even in the your well bore conditions, cement, some cement will be reacting a lot with the CO2. And we have to create or to use a proper cement quality in order to prevent any kind of reaction between the CO2 and cement surrounding the well board. Some of the uh, physical trapping that I mentioned, it can be a uh, structural trapping, which is related with the basin scale trapping. This is one of the biggest trapping in the early phases. And some of them is the physical trapping because of, uh, of the pore structures and for geometric details, which is related with the relative permeability data that I will explain you later. The other things, we also can think about the CO2 residual gas trapping, which is, it is immediately happen when we inject the CO2, the drainage process that happened. And then when the CO2 moving upward due to the buoyancy effect, uh, some of the CO2 will be uh, trapped. Into the, in the, into the geometry of the pores. We call it a CO2 as a residual phase. And the other things, some of the uh, CO2 will be trapping in the, will be trapped in the, in the, in the brine under the, the solutions. Some of them will be uh, precipitation of the CO2 as a mineral phases. And some of them, it will be subsorption in the clay material. Some of the clay like uh, smectite or elite, they are quite uh, reacting regarding the CO2 absorptions. So it's uh, in some cases, it's really good. But uh, if we have a lot of uh, clay, it means that uh, your injectivity should be less as well. Some of the good study last year, I, I, I found from, uh, from the lab uh, study from of the big laboratory in US, they also have seen a really uh, interesting reaction between kaolinite uh, with the CO2. Uh, I don't have a strong background with the uh, uh, surface uh, phenomenon uh, backgrounds, but uh, there is uh, some uh, wettability changings happen during the CO2 injection into the in the specific uh, clay. And then, since we already understood uh, basically the principle of the trapping, the coupling, and so on, some of the CO2 is also used for uh, many utilizations. A simple way, the CO2 utilization, you, you have uh, your soda, like your cola or something, it's also utilized the CO2 inside, but we are not talking about that today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about the CO2 utilization, mostly in the oil and gas industry, it can be used or is already proved a lot in the US and Canada uh, and some countries, even in the Central Europe. How the impact of the CO2 injection regarding the enhanced oil gas recovery, oil recovery and enhanced gas recoveries. This is one of the example uh, coming from uh, from the, the projects in the in the North America together with the uh, with the Canada. So how the CO2 uh, impacting a lot regarding the the recoverable uh, in the in the in the field here. It can be increased. The, the productivity of the of the reservoirs up to triples due to the CO2 injections. So this is one of the, the important of the CO2 utilization in the UR. The other thing is uh, some study, for example, from uh, Ezekiel and, uh, and friends, it is quite new papers. How's the CO2 
uh, can also improve the geothermal activities and also enhance gas activities in the depleted reservoirs. And then it is coupling for the geothermal activity as well. And how when you inject in the CO2, the, the supercritical CO2 can uh, use as part of the, as the EGR system, which is in, increase the, the quality of the geothermal uh, system here. And the, the plume establishment as well here can lead into the improvement for electricity generated. So this is the way of this utilization in geothermal. Uh, this concept is already uh, developed and many kind of simulation study was already implemented as well. So this is one of the good utilization uh, activities as well regarding uh, the utilization of CO2 into the subsurface activities. And the other part, and other one, some studies that uh, CO2 can be used as a cushion gas for, uh, for the gas storage or even for the hydrogen storage. Some simulation study was already done as well for many kind of publications that you can see on the right of hand side here. So the cushion gas actually, uh, it's really important to, to support the cyclic process, meaning that uh, if, you are in the, if you are in the gas storage, you are uh, trying to, uh, to reproduce of your, your injection materials into the reservoirs, then cushion gas can be a good uh, solution to, to, to be used for uh, helping the reservoir strength to get back the productions of your injected uh, fluid from your reservoir, mostly for the most common use in in in, uh, in the in the four seasons country, they have a storage gas. When they, whenever they they need it in winter, then they can produce it uh, for heating process. And some of the concept also used for hydrogen storage, but uh, there are some efficiency as well. How the CO two compare with the other gas, it can be good. And you also can see here how the CO2 compare with the others uh, different uh, gas, it can be related. And you can see here, the CO2 is not the best. The, 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 the recovery of the, the CO2 is, uh, is the less comparing with the, the least for comparing with the other cases, even though it still can be used as a utilization for the cushion gas into the storage. Then, how we can calculate it regarding the storage capacity? If we want to calculate the storage capacity, there are many methods that we can do a simple calculation. As I mentioned, the best practice for reservoir engineering that we routinely use in oil and gas, it can be adapted for the CO2 storage sites. So what is the most important? It's just a bit similar actually in oil and gas. Typically to understand the uncertainty of oil and gas uh, volume, it depends how many wells that we already drill. It is also the same that we are thinking about the CO2. The more well that we drill, the more well understood that our reservoir behaviors. Since we know already the behavior, the uncertainty of your storage, then we can easily to calculate it. Not easily, but actually we, we can uh, have a good ability to calculate in the better understanding how much the CO2 can be stored. A simple way we can use analytical method by using volumetric calculations or with some of the conversion regarding the CO2 uh, calculation behind. Or even we can run with the numerical simulation using the dynamic simulations like uh, we, we mostly use uh, for the oil and gas activities. In a simple way also you can uh, use a simple material balance with the depletion amount. And also we can uh, calculate it uh, by empirical model. Let's say you have a core flooding experiment and from core flooding experiment, you upscale it into the specific model that you understood how much the storage is coming from the uh, volumetrical uh, approach. And the other things that we also can integrate it with the multiple data sources, like from the seismic, from the data, and also it's really needed to integrate all of the informations coming from uh, subsurface data, from well logs data, from uh, seismic data, from pressure transient, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, any kind of uh, flow test and so on. But the most important is about uncertainty and sensitivity analysis regarding Monte Carlo simulations. 
So some of the uncertainty can be evaluated, very similar that we have done uh, regarding the, the, the reservoirs in the oil and gas. The other things that regarding the storage capacity from MBAL. This is one of the examples that I presented uh, in. So uh, this is one of the examples that uh, I calculated the storage capacity from uh, MBAL, which is quite simple. So we have a really good uh, pressure versus cumulative gas productions data, which is really nice matching. Uh, we have a really good depleted gas reservoirs. We also plot with the P of a Z. And then the, 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 the storage capacities also can be calculated simply. And then we run the, the compositional material balance here with uh, considering uh, the, 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 the CO2 uh, composition into the, into the calculation here. The most important here is that we can calculate it, how much the CO2 can be, uh, can be, uh, can be injected. And then uh, the other things that we also can calculate is how much the CO2 uh, can be reacted into the gas reservoir being an enhanced gas recovery. So through this one, we can evaluate the initial gas in place itself, and then we can calculate it, uh, the, the maximum uh, gas storage. And then what is the main uh, problem last time when we evaluated this one? Some of the limitations of the GSO in the surface, it's because the CO2 is increasing by the time, meaning that the, 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 the content of the CO2, while it's increasing, so we need the specific uh, the dust sweetening unit in the surface in order to uh, make the CO2 into the removals. And the other things that uh, we, we can uh, have a specific uh, enhanced gas recovery from this study. And the other things that uh, the this CO2 is also can be stored in the quite significant amount. The other things that the flow simulations. The flow simulation here is really important in under, to understanding uh, uh, CO2 behaviors so when we do the flow simulations, we have to try to understand what kind of reaction that we can couple and understanding. Since I mentioned that the CO2 can be impacted with the different uh, reactions uh, in the geochemical, geomechanical, geochemistry, in the, in the hydrogeological and biological. So that's why we try to make this understanding of the CO2 plume and also CO2 reaction with the fluids in the proper way. So many kind of simulations just consider regarding the regarding the compositional consideration with the solubility, but there are some also coupled with the geomechanics, some of the coupled with the thermal, some of the uh, coupled with the geochemistry evaluations. So why this is important? Uh, because we want to understand and estimate it, the, the main possible ultimate uh, storage that can be done in the reservoir. This is one of the good example, how the, the CO2 uh, in the real flow behavior is related to with the different uh, reservoir type, which is different rock types. And from here, we try to understand how the CO2 can be flow and also by the time how it can be uh, soluble uh, together with the, with the waters. So this kind of behavior, it should be understood into the simulations. And this is one of the examples from the Slater model. Uh, it's coming the open source data from co2datashare.org that you also can access it. And then you can run directly in your simulator how this uh, simulator can, uh, can uh, behave, uh, what we can do in the real uh, mess, uh, 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 study in the, in the surface. So as I mentioned, when we do the flow simulation, we try to make a good uh, consideration regarding the, the couples. It can be currently the most important couple that it already considered. It's related with the mechanical, chemical, and thermal. You can run the compositional. Let's say if you use Eclipse, you can use Eclipse 300, for example. Uh, but the missing here, you will missing the thermal and mechanical. Because what we do the simulation in the in the in the in the current simulation is non-isothermal. It's a isothermal uh, uh, cases, but in many cases of the CO2 brine, we need the non-isothermal model, meaning that uh, some thermal uh, simulation is needed together with the geomechanics uh, effects into the into the simulations. So this sort of a good example from Solo Salgado as well. 
how the quality of your CO2 it will be important. Because if you make the grid is quite big, uh, the the upscaling is too high, meaning that it's very hard for you to uh, to uh, to estimate at how much the CO two is soluble and how it is behaved. Because uh, you see, in the resolution of five millimeter, ten millimeter, and twenty milliliter millimeters, they have a different behavior of the of the concentrations of the CO two dissoluted into the brine. But if we make in the reservoir metal, typically we make the grid around 50 by 50 meter or 100 by 100 meters, meaning that it's really hard for us to, to see how the CO2 reacting uh, saturatedly in the, in, the, in the mold. So to make a proper model, it is also is needed how much the, the grid is the most optimized and how much the, the sensitivity we have to consider regarding the model. If you make a really fine model, really small grid, meaning that you will run the simulation much longer. But in the other hand, if you make the model is more uh, bigger size of the grid, meaning that the calculation can be uh, faster, but the accuracy can be reduced as well. The other things that uh, try to understand the, the data, the data of the relative permeability, it's really important uh, because the measurement in the lab is not only talking about the behavior of the flow uh, properties, but also try to understand how much the CO2 can be trapped if we run the inhibition model. So uh, this is one of the good paper as well. I think you can read it from uh, Abel in 2023, how the skull model can improve this, the, 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 the sense regarding the plume distributions regard, uh, in terms of the drainage process, and also how you can estimate it the, the plume distribution within the within the reservoir from the injection point. The other things that the, the study of uh, rock typing is needed as well because the the plume behavior is mostly related with the permeability and the saturation distribution is will be related with the with the relative permeability shape uh, together with the capillary pressures. And this paper is can be found from my recent paper. Actually, it is published in SP and also in EAG regarding the dynamic rock typing and two-phase flow uh, properties. And this is what I mentioned before. Uh, the, the CO2 is, uh, uh, sorry, the CO2 is will be, the distribution is related with the rock types. And also the, 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 the plume distribution is also will be related with the rock type uh, dependence. And the other thing said about the storage evaluations. In some simulation also, we have to consider if there are some leakage pathway can be happen. You also can understand that how much the CO2 dissolve and how much the CO2 is still in the free condition. And this is what must be calculated during the, the reservoir simulations. And this will be a really good understanding as well. Let's say for after 250 years simulation here, you can see how much the CO2 is dissolved in the, in the, in the brine and how much the CO2 is still in the free phase. And this is really good understanding as well, how, how this, uh, this uh, model can, can be uh, for us to understand uh, the, the containment of the reservoir and also the ultimate uh, storage of the CO2. This is one of the good uh, example as well from Chair Dasset 2022 from the CCUS conference, how the CO2 uh, with the different uh, simulation model is run. We have to run in the full water reservoir. Water saturation is 100% or one. You can store, store the CO2 in the same model, maximum around 90 BCF. But what if you consider regarding the compositional from geomechanic, uh, from compositional run, if you run with the 0 0.83, you can see it's jumping a lot. The, the saturation from 90 BCF to 480 something. And then if we consider the geomechanics inside the simulations, there are some shifted of the volume of estimations. But when you consider the thermal, the thermal simulation, this is using a CNG stars, it's also reduce the capacity of the storage. So if you do a simulation study from this result, which one is, is your uh, uh, really sure the storage it uh, will be stored your CO2? It will be really challenging. It's meaning that the study 
of the simulation study regarding the saturation uh, sensitivity regarding the storage and the coupling effect, it must be really considered because the impact is really big, uh, either only for a compositional, combined with the geomechanical, or even combined with the thermal. The behavior is really, really different from, uh, from simulation to simulations. And the other things that uh, it will be also related with the forecast, this is also interesting. There are some activities when you do the simulations of your uh, model, some of activities, let's say, if you only inject your reservoirs with two injectors, you only can store 500 BCF from your model. But if you make another system, let's say you have a three injectors now, we didn't do anything, it's only increased small. But if you make another possible process, let's say you, you have two injection well and one shot in well, and then you produce one well for a while, it's meaning that you are changing the compressibility inside the, your system, and then how much you, your, your uh, CO2 can be stored? It can be double. So that's why this kind of sensitivity is really matter how you can make a good strategy in order to make a good uh, model, and especially for the dynamic model for your reservoir simulations. The other things that like a residual structural and solubility, it will, can be calculated and you can understand by the time how much the CO2 is uh, in the residual condition, how much the CO2 in the structural conditions, and how much the CO2 in the solubility conditions with the different uh, different scenarios. I think we almost finished the time. I already passed the time, but I will try to wrap up quite quickly. Once you already make a good model, you also need to decide how to monitor the, the CO2. The monitoring itself, it can be done through the wells or even through the seismic, which is using a 40 seismic. Any kind of the monitoring uh, process also can be done. Let's say, for example, here we can learn from the previous study. We can learn from the Sleipner cases in Salah and Osnofit, and different technologies different uh, was implemented. Why it's a different technology was implemented? Because they are working in the different times uh, time scale. I mean, a different time uh, time zone. Uh, Slimner, it was in early phases. There, there, there wasn't a lot of uh, good technology was existing, but now, in Salah, uh, they they have a different uh, measurement because they're also working in onshore and offshore. We can put the more uh, monitoring uh, methods into your uh, into your uh, system, or even in Snofi. But maybe currently. We can have a better technologies if we implemented a new CCS and more a lot of technology that we can do for uh, having a good monitoring activity that CO2 is still remain in the reservoir. But the more technology we put, the more cost we have to, to put as well. So this is some of the which of the of the most uh, good uh, uh, design that we have to do for monitoring the CCS or the CO2 carbon, CO2 carbon storage. Uh, regarding the monitoring uh, uh, technologies that we have to put. And the other things that this is one of the example from a slave nurse, uh, how the, the CO2 can be monitored with the different timeline. So meaning that you have to run the CO2 in a different time and you will see that how the, the bloom distribution can be investigated in the big scale through the, through the seismic uh, data. And then I think this is uh, one of the almost the last of my presentations uh, about the site integrity and risk management. Since you already consider well how the your your uh, your uh, your understanding of the CO two storage assessment, what is the most important thing is about the risk uh, evaluations regarding the, the the risk management as well. It can be risk at the performance risk. It can be related with the containment risk. And also with the public perception risk, which is not engineering stuff. It is we try to we we try to explain to the society that uh, this this work is uh, is safe. And also some of the risks like the market fail risk as well, political risk. It can be part of this one. So, what is take home message that I can uh, give to you? If about the best practice in the subsurface evaluations. Uh, it's really needed that uh, coming from oil and gas uh, routinely, it can be used or can be adopted uh, for our GCS activities. 
The other things that uh, successful CO2 storage uh, are required a secure geological container. And uh, the most important that we can make a good screening process with the site selection process from the beginning until some fundamental questions from the geological target uh, formations. The other thing is that the element of CO2 storage, it uh, need to be quantified uh, because uh, the most important that you have to uh, keep in your mind, the capacity, the containment, and the injectivity. How much the CO2 can be stored, how much CO2 can be delivered by daily, and the second is how it can be safe or remain the CO2 is not to go to everywhere, not leakage into the surface. And the third, that is injectivity. And also, we can use all of our expertise that we already implemented in oil and gas uh, regarding the mapping, modeling, uh, taking the, the data, uh, and so on. It can be still used in the oil and gas. And also, one of the most important is about monitoring behaviors for the long-term storage. It will be mostly related with the scientific activity that we have to follow. And also, it's not only about the operators, uh, adapt uh, regarding the technology uh, regarding this one, but the regulators, uh, the government also have to make a good appreciation for a fit for proposed design and performance expectations. That's all. Uh, I think I, I already more than uh, 45 minutes, but I hope this can uh, give you a little bit of a view how the CO2 storage uh, uh, can be have a good understanding regarding to make a good characterization for you uh, for your uh, carbon storage in the future. I open for question and answers. Thank you very much for your attention.